The West Clock's Moonbeam style of alarm clocks from 1948 until 1957. Following that, they were reintroduced from 1963 until 1980 with a rectangular plastic case, and there was also an accompanying digital version made from 1974 until 1980, all of which share the very characteristic that makes these moonbeam alarm clocks unique. And then is the fact that behind this translucent piece of butyrate plastic, there is a 25 watt nightlight style light bulb, which begins to flash rapidly when your alarm is going off. So to wake you up, it actually uses light. And the fl they're hoping that the flashing of the light wakes you up instead of having to rely upon a mechanical bell ringer or an electronic buzzer provides for a bit of a, an easier way to wake you up early in the morning. And amazingly, this moonbeam is in fully working condition, something that can't be said for the vast majority of those which are sold, used at thrift stores, antique stores, or even online on eBay. Uh, you can see we've got one here. I believe it's this one that um, person states that the alarm does not work. The hour and the minute hands are in good condition. I don't know, however, if the minute hand is supposed to be curved such as it is right now. You can see it's a fair bit more curved than the hour hand, so I don't know what that's all about. Now looking at the top end of the dial, you can see a small red dot. And this is actually another unique feature, and that is a power failure indicator. Power grids weren't anywhere near as reliable as they are now, and so people needed to have an accurate representation of the time. Obviously, since these alarm clocks had no battery backups to speak of, and there were no such thing as smartphones to rely upon to get an accurate idea of what the current time was, you need to at least know if the power had failed, thus causing your clock to fall behind, or ahead, such as it may be. So, what would happen is this would normally, this dial would normally be the same color as the rest of the dial, but the minute power was interrupted, even for a brief second or two, it would trigger this to switch over to this red indicator. And if we spin this alarm clock around, it says right here, to reset signal, tilt backward. Now this is a bit stiff and a bit, uh, a bit old, so what I have to do to reset that indicator is to do their directions, to follow their directions, flip it upside down, but to give it a little shake. This unit actually needs to be powered in to reset that indicator. So I'll do just that right now. You can see that second hand movement that's of a continuous motion, which is something that's not all too popular on modern day clocks and even alarm clocks if you can find one such as this that's mechanical. And it's nice because you don't hear that constant ticking sound that's associated with a regular second hand motion where it moves every second. And when I go ahead and disconnect the power momentarily, you'll see it flick on to red. Made by West Clocks, USA. If I'm not mistaken, this clock was available in a few other colors, although I could very well be wrong at least for the very early iterations of this clock. This one's made of a yellow butyrate plastic. And amazingly, if you want to acquire a Moonbeam style alarm clock yourself, you can still buy them brand new, at least from LLBean.com and Amazon. They're selling for $49.95, and uh, they're in pale green, bluegrass, and vanilla, which is definitely a lot more a lot closer to the color that this one is in. And these give you a lighted dial, an on and off backlight switch, snooze functionality, and a battery backup, as well as an LED light for the indicator here, which is a bit of an improvement over the original Moonbeam alarm clocks. But one thing that probably would turn many people off, such as myself, take a look at how incredibly cheap this alarm clock looks. Nothing at all like the original Moonbeam, which turning this one around <laughs> reveals a lot more robust and sturdy controls, ones that will probably last a fair bit longer than those which were included on the modern day Moonbeams. But just goes to show you it was a popular enough design 
to at least render it uh, not quite obsolete in this day and age of waking up to your iPod or using your phone as an alarm clock. These are still being sold brand new. And on the rear of the alarm clock we have our alarm setting knob here and an indicator as well with a very very small barely perceptible red arrow which you can just barely see over by the 6. And if I adjust the time now you can see that the arrow is changing relative to the time that we want to set the alarm for. We have our alarm setting here to enable or disable it which you can do so just by pulling it out or pushing it in to disable it. Your clock setting knob here and some information telling us that the lamp is a 25 watt variant model S5-J and you can see more indication of this clock's age as it mentions that it's 115 volts, 60 cycles, 2 watts once again made in the USA and UL listed too it turns out that in addition to waking up to that flashing light which I'll demonstrate in just a moment there's also a backup buzzer which goes off after a predetermined amount of time as a sort of backup if you will that is to say if you don't get woken up by the flashing light after a certain amount of time probably around 10 or 20 minutes if not more the mechanical buzzer will begin to sound which will hopefully no doubt wake you up if you slept through the light so what I will do now is actuate the alarm by enabling it and we'll see what this is set to and we will now go ahead and set this and you can see just as it comes around you can see that this light is beginning to flash to wake us up now what I'll do to demonstrate the alarm under typical circumstances and if you go backwards the light actually stays on constantly which is not something that you want to happen as it would probably overheat so I'll do that yet again this time going a bit slower and hopefully the light will only illuminate this time there we go so the light flashes like so and if I there we go and then to shut the alarm off you simply push it in like so. The underside of the alarm clock actually has some engraved instructions which tell you how to replace the bulb. There's a total of three screws which you are to remove to gain access to it, one of which was missing. You simply remove it. You can see the inside. And here's the clock which I've made sure to unplug before taking a look inside. And just a word of warning, your dial face could very well have come loose from, from the sands of time and the heat from this bulb drying up the glue which affixes this to the metal backing plate. So what I ended up doing was using some Elmer's glue from a glue stick as well as a cotton swab here to just apply copious amounts of glue to four corners if you could call them that of this circular clock face and then apply very carefully the dial card over it because I don't know I'm sure there's a way to remove the hour minute and second hands of a clock but I didn't want to go to that trouble of possibly breaking something so I just very carefully bent this this card here applied the glue and then pushed it in place I actually used this Bluetooth speaker because it's quite heavy as if I don't drop it as something of a weight to hold the dial card down so that it glued properly. It's a very primitive design. You have a 25 watt light bulb, which is not the original bulb. And it's a bayonet style base for those which are needing a replacement. Very, very simple design. Amazing that it still works. Somebody definitely took good care of this thing as I see evidence of lubrication on the gears and cogs of the mechanism. The only thing I'm, that concerns me is that the top of this dial card is beginning to deteriorate probably by people getting going in here so much it's rubbing up against that metal shield there so I need to be careful that this doesn't start tearing because right now you see the area that's right about here 
and I don't want this to start spreading down to where the dial has to be replaced. I find it a bit funny too that they didn't use a cloth power cord here, but the internal wiring of it uses cloth wiring. You can see the wire nut there, the transformer. If I spin this around now, the mechanism keeping time. And now what I'll do is go ahead and see and get this to uh, get the alarm to trip. So you can see that's the buzzer mechanism right there. The one that's responsible for making this noise. I find it pretty amazing that a clock of this vintage still keeps perfect working time. So it just uses a very simple 25 watt. Apparently somebody thought it was a good idea to put a 50 watt bulb in here. You might just be able to see that. They used a 50 watt GE bayonet based bulb. Probably an appliance bulb. But this recommends using a 25 watt bulb. So no wonder why it gets a bit hot and it is extremely bright. I guess that's all the person had on hand. And now to put this front cover back on here again, I'd recommend moving the clock hands as such. They point down like that. And the cover simply goes on like so. And mine has all but one screw. So I'll need to track one down that's of a similar size. And these simply screw down into those two holes there and that hole over there. You do not remove these screws over here or you'll run into some trouble trying to get this thing back together. I think I just solved the riddle of why there's a missing screw here. I just noticed that uh, the, I tried using one of these screws over here in this hole and they just wouldn't gain any grip. And it's probably because the threads have been stripped and I just just thought of something and that's probably why. If you notice these screws even when they're tight they don't screw in all the way they still stick out some and I guess what the other person or owner or whoever serviced this thing at one time thought hey the screws aren't going in all the way they probably have to screw in more so he kept trying to tighten it and he ended up stripping whatever threads were here and then ended up losing the screw because it wouldn't stay in place. 